it's a youth culture. Hip hop is a youth culture, but why Jing is the youth? It's the young generation. And my name is Yang CPT. Yeah, yeah, we want to. This is our blood. So you must just watch out. Eight cake for all. We patrolling. Patrolling officer. As I told you earlier, they always, you know, securing the perimeter, doing trouble. But uh, today they came to us for a picture. How nice. Coming from the West Cap, West Coast. It's like Cape Town and Compton or Step Bros. If you don't understand our slang, keep your big closed. I grew up around Tupac's, they were all on death row. Coming straight out of Cape Town, a crazy motherfucker named Gunster. Well, the decision to speak about that came from a lot of um, research. It came from a lot of conscious rappers as well, like Common and Tupac and Nas. And just people I felt were also trying to push a similar message in their music. So listening to rappers like that, you get inspired yourself to seek for knowledge and seek truth. These other rappers were on TV and I couldn't touch them and feel them and see them. But my grandfather was there, you know, and he was telling me Yo, as a young man, this is what you need to know. Yeah, my grandfather always gave me the, the raw truth, even if I didn't like it, even if I didn't want to hear it. For my grandmother and my grandfather, their, their childhood and their memories and, you know, their, their upbringing was taken away like that, in front of them. So houses were bulldozed while they were standing there. During the, the forced removal era, they were, um, they were removed out of that house in District 6. Because my grandfather actually came from Simonstown, he said, no, it's fine, you can go back to me. Because he, he, he still has his family house there, so they're allowed to go back there. Then Simonstown became a white-owned area as well. All the people that lived in Simonstown were all taken from there and put into the ocean. So my grandfather and my grandmother was removed twice. Most families were only moved once. It actually shows how far the extent of the cruelty went that they actually had time to think like, wait, this area is also nice. Let's take them out of here. Like, they could have just left them in Simon's town. Of the ocean view, my grandfather never went anywhere. That's the sad reality because many of them in that age bracket have accepted it. They've accepted defeat. I feel like he was robbed. You know? I feel like he didn't get that chance to be the number one bodybuilder in the country or to be that number one soccer player that he could have been, or to live in Cape Town, and who knows how his life could have been if he stayed there. I feel like I owe it to this, this people of this generation to say something. If there's anything I can give back to the world, to the youth, I should give them the truth. You know? And that other kids that grow up don't believe certain things in South Africa or the way they are by chance. It was actually systematically done to us. You know? Look, I put your hands on the your key and no, oh. in the office. Oh. Mm. 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 learning my own dress code. Like mom's always tell you what's looking dope and what's not. <laughs> I still ask my mother today what must I wear. To this day I still ask. I don't have a stylist. Ten years I don't have a stylist. There's no fashionista that's teaching me how to dress for my videos, my shows. Yeah she is like she gave me the game. She gave me the game. 
When I was like 14, 15 years old, I just saw Takis as my room. So, as long as I was coming here to look yeah, at you, I was just, I was gonna, I was gonna be around it. Yeah, I was like, just to think of how far, how far it's come. But now we've got our own stores. You know, and if we wanna change the color of the wall or we wanna change the channel on the TV, we can help. What do you know? As I say, change the channel. I didn't mean change the channel. But as you can see, you know, I don't even know kids, but I look at it as the Y generation is my kids. You know, I brought up a whole generation of rappers, of new rappers, coloured rappers. Guys who look like me and speak like me, feel that they can be rappers. Previously, it was only black America that we looked at like, yeah, that's rap. We can't do that. We are in South Africa, we are not black. We can't do that. We speak Afrikaans. We we Muslims, we, we come from Cape Town, it's a different world, we can't rap in this place. Until I decided that I don't, I don't believe in it. I can be whatever I want to be. If I want to be a rapper, I want to be a rapper. And by me doing this and, and having this establishment and building this, it, it's testimony that I wasn't lying. I didn't have to conform, I didn't have to change who I was to become successful. This office and the building itself even is testimony to that. That serves as a lesson for the next generation, for those coming up, for the Y generation as well, and the uh, and generation Z, because that's what we're in now. And I want them to see that their previous generation, their predecessors, the Y gen, which is me, I was not afraid. I was not afraid to take risks. I was not afraid to take choices. I left it all on the floor. I want them to see that. I want them to realize that and remember that. That, yes, my mother didn't get the chance. My grandfather really didn't get the chance. It's my turn now. Watch him. Yeah. B O C B T. Cops not still spreading up.